Hello, everyone. I'm Hannah. I'm the teaching pastor at Urban Village Church. If you talk about me, you can use the pronouns she and her. And I am so glad to welcome you today to our group sermon for Valentine's Day. So we're talking love, sex, romance, partnership, a wildly diverse body of things um, that all of us experience totally differently that may or may not be at the center of our thoughts or lives, um, but all of which can be a part of our discipleship. And I think in many cases, or at least that's what I hear from a lot of people, uh, are topics that we're all kind of thinking through and revisiting and rethinking from what we thought before all the time. So you're going to hear from the three of us today on what some of that journey has been like for us. And to do that, we'd love for you to know who we are. So like I said, I'm Hannah. Um, I am a straight cis woman. I've been married for about 10 years um, and I still find myself utterly confused and trying to think through what it means to be a loving partner all the time. <laughs> so that's part of my journey. Um, and I will invite Victoria to tell us about who you are. Hi everyone, I'm Victoria and I use she, her pronouns. I am currently Zooming in from Connecticut. I am working on my Master of Divinity at Yale Divinity School, um, but I did go to Urban Village Church for the first time in summer 2017 when I was living in Chicago, and I also came back in summer 2019 and was the summer ministry intern based at the Wicker Park site, so it's really great to be back. Um, I identify as bisexual and had actually come out um, when I first came to UBC. Um, yeah, and I'm grateful for the ways that this community has been here as I've been discerning among other communities that I've been a part of. And I am glad to be a part of this conversation. Hi, everybody. My name is Drew Jones. And I've been at UVC for about seven and a half, almost eight years now. Um, my home location is the Hyde Park Woodlawn site. And uh, I'm a single dad with um, one biological child, three adopted sons and a foster son. Um, I'm twice divorced. I, was, I got married really young um, to a woman and we were together for six years. Uh, and then I was married again to my now ex-husband. Um, we were together for almost seven years. And uh, I'm right now single, identify as pansexual. I use he, him pronouns, um, but you can pretty much call me anything except late for dinner. And um, I'm really grateful to be in a space where um, I can look at my sexual orientation as something that's more uh, fluid, uh, but also very, um, very God connected. And so I'm also grateful to be a part of this conversation with you today. Hallelujah to God for making us all so different and so awesome. Um, so the first question, I, I do just think um, this is an area where everybody changes a lot over time. We grow up in a culture where it's really hard to talk about sex, love, and what healthy relationships look like in general. Um, too often, Christianity has made it harder. <laughs> Um, so as you have grown in your understanding of sex, love, and partnership, what have been some of the biggest surprises? Um, what is something that you learned that changed your faith at some point along the way? I guess I'll go first. Um, I have been most surprised by how God continues to show up in my life, regardless of my relationship status. Um, I have seen God move and bless my family and bless me while I was married. I've seen God move and bless me and prune me spiritually while I'm single. Um, I have gone through seasons of being sexually active. I've gone through seasons of being um, abstinent. And I have learned um, that my connection to God is not dependent on where I am um, in, my, in my relationship status. I've also been surprised at how resilient and welcoming my children have been um, at having conversations about um, sexual orientation, about loving your body and um, respecting your body. Um, I've also been very pleasantly surprised at how legislation and um, public school curricula 
has become begun to come in line with um, being open and transparent and affirming uh, of folks who have different sexual orientations or gender expressions. I just wanna say like a huge hallelujah to that point you make about God meeting you in all the stages and states of your life. Cause I think so often, um, you know, Paul really thought that everybody should be single. How could you possibly have a partner and follow God? That seems bananas. And I think often churches today are the opposite. They, they only sort of pay attention to partnered people. It's almost like becoming partnered as a part of knowing Jesus. Um, when really like both are such small visions of who God is. Of course, God can meet us in singleness, in partnership, in relationship outside of it. But that sometimes feels impossible. And so that's such a beautiful witness. Thank you. Amen. How about you, Victoria? What have you learned along the way? Yeah. Um, so as part of my journey, um, at one point in my life, I was in um, faith communities that were non-affirming and that had a very rigid view about gender roles and relationships. And so moving from that into um, more affirming Christian spaces and then later coming out myself, um, I realized how different the framing was between those two as not just the um, one model for everyone um, and very heteronormative with the strict gender roles, um, but moving towards the more progressive Christian communities, it's not that there's just one alternative model for everyone. Um, there's a lot more openness there in terms of what you were talking about earlier, like whether somebody is partnered or single or polyamorous, um, and regardless of what their sexual orientation is, there are, there's a lot more openness to explore. Um, and that's something that can go along with self-discernment um, in relation to faith. Um, and rooting those reflections in one's faith um, because there are multiple pathways that can be affirmed um, and it's okay to change your labels or to do some more reflection and learn more about yourself and learn that um, something else is more healthy for you um, and God is present in that continuous process of reflection and discernment. Mm. How beautiful that, that, and I think that idea of discipleship and discernment in every aspect of our lives, right? I think most of us have some area around which we feel shame or discomfort. And so we think, oh, I just won't talk to God about that, right? It's either like it's money or it's family or it's sex or it's whatever. And there's so much available for discernment and conversation. I'll say one thing I learned that surprised me I, many of you all know, I grew up non-religious, converted in my teens, and my family really raised me to be affirming. Um, the first people I knew besides my parents were their gay couple next door who gave me my first set of books. And, you know, so I came sort of instinctively uh, uh, LGBTQ affirming, but not knowing any of the Jesus stuff about it, the Bible stuff about it. And so I struggled with what a lot of my fellow Christians seemed to want from me, which was like, a seven step argument, you know, a like point by point, here's why. I would be like, because of niceness, you know, like because of love, look, what do you mean? Here's why. And, and I remember it was really helpful to me at some point when I read the argument or experienced, you know, I'm in, I think what a lot of sort of Christians who have a lot of rigidity around this would want. I'm in a straight marriage that I've been in for a super long time. <laughs> we got married really young and my marriage is not in the Bible. It's not, it's no, it's nowhere in it. Like it's, it's just not, I find no advice for how to work out, figuring out how to share money as a 2021 couple or figuring right. out how to divide washing the dishes as a 2021 couple directly in the Bible. My marriage is not there. And so if we can be flexible enough to hold my marriage, we can be flexible enough to hold a lot more. And in fact, maybe that's not how we're supposed to use the scriptures, right? Maybe the scriptures teach us principles of love that can be applied to all kinds of relationships and marriages and partnerships. Maybe they teach us principles of justice, principles of God above all. So that was a big like help 
helpful point for me where I felt like I learned something about what does faith have to do with all this. Amen. And that's, yeah. Oh, sorry. Drew, go. Yeah, I just said amen. Um, I, yeah. I concur wholeheartedly. Yeah. So this is kind of related. What resources have been most helpful to you as you've discerned this relationship um, to your to this part of your life? Are there any like books, YouTube channels, spiritual practices that have really helped you out that you'd commend to others? Um, a resource that I was thinking about um, that is an image that I think is helpful um, is one that actually came up in a, um, in a Christian sexual ethics workshop at a progressive Christian like college student ministry last semester um, that I've been advising. Um, but the image that was given during this panel uh, was that of a tree um, where the tree represents you or the person and the branches of this tree represent different actions or choices that a person can discern related to sex and love and relationships and the roots of the tree represent grounding in faith and in the values from that. Um, so those roots could look like something like loving your neighbor as yourself and viewing each human being as a beloved child of God who you want to do no harm to and to contribute to their flourishing. Um, and that's also something to believe about yourself um, when making these choices, which could look different for different individuals, but the roots and like the founding in faith uh, um, is like a stable groundwork to work from. Mm -hmm. mm. I really like that. Um, when I was in the military, I served during the don't ask, don't tell era. And so um, being in school and doing my thesis on the don't ask, don't tell uh, policy actually sparked my interest in um, LGBTQ rights. And it became real for me because I was in, I was a cisgender uh, man who was identifying as straight, but I was at least bisexual. Um, and I had to process all of that while being in the military. And so a couple of resources that I used, one was a book called Openly Gay, Openly Christian. Uh, another was a movie, a documentary that I watched called For the Bible Tells Me So. Um, but in addition to those, having a, using, the ther using my therapists, family counselors, chaplains uh, were all very, very helpful. Um, writing music was very helpful. Um, and even though I don't think it was her intention to, for this book to be freeing in this way, um, Joyce Meyer's book, uh, Battlefield of the Mind, actually was really cr uh, critical in shifting my mindset um, from being locked into my own thinking and expanding every part of my life, um, making each crevice of my heart acceptable um, and presentable to God, um, no matter if it brought me joy or embarrassment. And mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm grateful for all of those things um, being present. And then a great circle of friends doesn't hurt either. Hallelujah. Yeah, people are the best. I, I think um, this, something that's interesting to me is something that somebody said to me once in a conversation about sexuality uh, we were sort of talking about like purity culture and virginity and and we really came to this place where, the, where we said to each other, I think God might care about chastity, but it's hard for me to imagine God caring about virginity because that imagines that there's something, there's some moment with God that you can't take back where you're right, ruined, made different. This is the sort of like sexist narrative that a lot of us got as teenagers, right? And I was working through that. And they were like, I, I, that doesn't sound like God to me, right? That just doesn't sound right. And, and I ended up using that in my discernment around so many things that I felt anxious about, right? Like who I was as a person and whether I contributed to the world and whether grace was real. It, it wasn't just about sex. It was about everything, about who I believed mm -hmm. God to be. Was mm -hmm. God someone who I was afraid of? Or was God someone who I trusted <laughs> and thought was involved in my life and loved me? 
Um, and I'll say the spiritual practice that has helped me most in thinking about healthy relationships and discerning um, sex and love and sex practices has been directly asking God, which you would be shocked how often people will not do it. Mm -hmm. They will read every book in the universe looking for the right answer, but are afraid to ask God directly because we're afraid of what we might find. <laughs> and the biggest thing for me has been saying, God, help me out here. God, I'm scared of this. God, I'm feeling bad about this. God, I don't know what I believe. And that has been just a profound practice that has really changed everything for me. So I'd offer that on. And also the work of Reverend Dr. Will Gaffney. <laughs> or the book, Good Christian Sex by Bromley McClenahan, which we are doing a small group on right now. So beautiful. And that kind of brings us to our last question, which is, we've heard today from the Song of Songs that has this vision of ecstatic intimacy and love that is God-given and that is exciting and being bold and breaking the rules of your society to follow that ecstatic love. We've talked a little bit about the vision of Paul, right, which was sort of be celibate so you can love your neighbor all the time. Forget about all that. That's a distraction. <laughs> we've talked about our own experiences of journey. If we were going to imagine, say we imagined a church that was a kingdom or kingdom church that was that had wholeness and integrity and boldness in Jesus and its witness around love and sex. What are some of the things that you imagine that church might be like? What would some of its practices be? Um, and then what are some ways we as a community can grow a little bit closer to that? What are some ways that we can um, move towards that wholeness of vision that Jesus invites us to? And I'll just start with a small thing, but I think most things start with small things is that I imagine a truly sort of kingdom church witness around sexuality would involve the ability to learn and articulate our relationship with God around sex and sexuality at a number of different ages, that there would be kind of whole life discernment as well as whole body and whole life discernment. Um, and so I am thinking about um, if you would like to be one of these, getting some of our folks trained on the Our Whole Lives curriculum, which is a sexuality and faith curriculum created by the United Church of Christ and the Unitarian Universalist Association, um, where you can offer courses at any age that are age appropriate um, to figure out who you are when it comes to sex, love, and partnership and what the world is like. And so that's one step I think we could take into more wholeness um, in this area of our life as a church. How about you all? I would hope that a kingdom church will be a place where people don't have to come out. Um, and, and I raise my children where, where they don't have to come out. They don't have to tell me if they're straight. They don't have to tell me if they're gay. They don't have to tell me if they're bisexual. Um, I, I invite them to share about their friend circles. And if they're dating someone, we have, you know, kind of predetermined like ages where uh, where dating is, is permissible and ages where it's not. Um, but I think in a kingdom, in a kingdom church, um, people wouldn't have to come out. People don't have to um, tell, uh, introduce, worry about how they introduce someone they bring to church, to church. Um, I remember after I came out and I would, I told, you know, a family member, I was like, oh, do you remember such and such that I brought to church? That was my boyfriend. They're like, oh, really? You know, the shock, like clutching the pearls, but a place where you could, like, if it was my boyfriend, I could say, hey, this is my boyfriend, such and such, or hey, this is my girlfriend, such and such. Um, I think a kingdom church would be a place where it's acceptable not to have to explain it's acceptable not to have to put a title on, but also where we care for folks who have put on that brave face, who have come out and help them to work through some of life's later stages. Like what happens when you're in a relationship with someone who grew up in a different um, spiritual practice, you know? What happens when you um, are dating someone who's of a different religion and you need um, spiritual advising or premarital counseling, a place where they know coming to their church uh, will help resolve and, and mold them and not coming to your church is going to be a place where they try to hinder you from being with that person, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and those, those are my two thoughts. So not having to come out and being at a, being at a place where 
you, you can be supported no matter what stage of life you're at. For me, thinking about a kingdom church, um, I think about a place where um, things don't have to be so compartmentalized, um, like the view that sexuality and relationships is something that's not supposed to be related to one's faith life. Um, but in a kingdom church, there would be encouragement for people to feel like they can bring their entire selves and entire life um, into their relationship to God and to their faith. Um, and it would be a community where people are affirmed and supported in the different stages of life, um, as has been mentioned, um, and also in the different journeys and different paths that are best for their individual contexts. Um, yeah, to receive that support and community. Um, and yeah, I'm really glad to hear about UVC's small group that's forming around this, which, yeah, that sounds like a really good community for exploring this. Yeah, because there never stop being questions, right? Even if you are asexual or aromantic or celibate or unpartnered, we all are in a, a network of mutuality around the harm that has been done to our self-image and the way that we think about bodies and relationships. And I think for all of us, there's always gifts and growth and love and grace and justice on the other side of seeking a fuller and wholer vision of what Jesus has for us in our bodies, in our connections, in our souls, in our lives, love and otherwise. And the weird thing about being the church right now is that I think this is one of the areas where we've been the most broken and so we have the fewest answers. <laughs> But what a gift to be surprised all the time, right? To lead with love, to lead with belonging, and then learn something new every day. And so I really thank you guys for helping us in that, for helping us to learn today. And I pray that we will all move forward to do even more learning and growing together. Amen. Amen. Amen.